Well, I thought I would uh, help you guys out with a little uh, help with homework number one since we're doing this course online and uh, most folks that typically could come by my office hours don't have a chance to do that and see me. So um, the big deal about homework number one is number one, the wording. It's very important that you word the uh, structure of a proof correctly and remember things like you have to declare a variable before you get to use them. So I'm going to set this thing up now. Remember, you should be running it in paragraph form. The goal is to always take the information and through theorems and definitions be able to get and write equations and then be able to manipulate the equations and stuff. So, to help you out with this, and again, I'm going to show you the famous, this is what I do on a proof before I actually write it up, and that is the uh, want to show. So, this is not my actual thing I'm going to turn in. I'm going to talk about how to actually set up and basically the strategy of actually how to get the idea of a proof, linking things together. You always start out with the givens and then you talk about what you want to show. Well, what I want to show in this one, let's read the problem. We'll let A, B, and C be integers. And if A divides B and B divides C, I want to prove that A divides C. So I want to show A divides C. Now remember, on a proof, you're not allowed to use symbols. You've got to write the equation, or write the words, A divides C. You try to kind of work on it such that it actually goes towards an equation. So, and you can always write equations, but not a slash for divides and no, no shortcuts on the symbols and the like. So, with this being the case, here we go. We want to show that A divides C. Now, by definition of divides, this actually means what I really want to show is that C is equal to A times, and this is going to be the key, some integer. That's what I really want to show. I want an equation with C is equal to A times some integer. Now, let's start with the givens. What were you given? You were given that A divides B, and you're given that B divides C. So I can kind of group these two guys together, but here's the deal. By definition of divides, Again, the goal is to get equations. If A divides B, um, then that means that B is equal to A times some integer. I need to tell you what the integers are. Well, by definition of divides, there exists integers. Since I have two divides here, I'm going to call it my famous X and Y, such that, let's see, if A divides B, B is bigger b would be equal to a times your first integer x and b divides c c is bigger so c would be equal to b times the other integer y the goal is to write equations now these are the two equations that I have now what I want to show is c equals a times some integer well I got c equals so a famous linking word so as, so it kind of links you into the next aspect of the uh, proof. You have C is equal to B times Y, but B is equal to AX, so you can substitute. So C is equal to replace B with AX times Y, and you always have to state your reason by substitution. And you know, thus, C is equal to A times X, Y. I can move the parentheses around, and that is by algebra. Officially, it's dissociativity property. So there is my integer. Now, what I want to do here is how to back this thing off, and I want to show that A divides C. Well, I have to show that A times some integer is equal to C. Well, this is a integer. Why is it an integer? Well, you start up with the word since the parts x and y is an integer. Then 
x times y is an integer. We automatically know playing with integers is that um, sums and products of integers is an integer. And then I finish it off. Therefore, by definition of divides, and then you declare what you're trying to show here, and that is that a divides c. Now this is a general sketch of a proof with a want to show and the like. So that being the case, now this is not what you should actually be turning into me. You're going to have to go back and rewrite that. So you start out with pretty much given and write it in English. A divided B and B divided C. By definition of I's, there exist integers. Now I probably did a lot more on this one to kind of help you out. But it's all about the structure. And actually, this is the game plan on basically do a little kind of post-it note. So you get a whole new, print out another one of these problems and then rewrite it. And again, in classic paragraph form like the problems we've done on the videos. So if we look at the next one. There's this one here. It says this. Let A, B, C, and D be integers. If A divides B and B divides C, prove that A times C divides B times D. Alright, so pretty much the same type of deal here. So again, this is my scrap sheet of paper. So if you don't really think about it as a scrap sheet of paper, I will do this to you guys so you actually understand this is something you should a professor should never see. These are your thoughts. So here, it's a post-it note. Alright, here we go. What do I want to show? I want to show that A times C divides B times D. How do you show that? Well, this is by definition divides. Definition divides. I really want to show that B times D is equal to A times C times some integer. Okay? So that's what I'm after. I want an equation with B times D in it. Well then, typically how you start the proof, you start with the givens. What was given? Your first given that A divides B. And you should write it up. Remember, you have to declare a variable before you could use it. Given that A divides B, by definition, you've got to state your reason, of divides, there exists an integer. I pick my favorite x again. Such that, and you've got to write your equation. If A divides B, B is bigger. B is equal to A times X. And notice how I wrote this up. This is traditionally, without the little symbol here, this is traditionally how we actually write it up. you got to clear X before you can use an equation. Now, I've had lots of students email me and talk about this stuff a little bit, and they keep doing this. Well, as A divides B, B equals uh, A times X for some integer X. Well, that's actually a little bit out of order. Now when you get into the higher level uh, uh, proof classes, math classes, and the graduate level classes and stuff, they'll start cutting some corners. But this is that writing intensive proper etiquette math class that we're talking about. It's your first math proof class. And officially you have to declare the variable before you get to use it. Similarly, you also have that uh, you're given that C divides D. So that by that definition of divides, there exists an integer Y such that D is equal to C times Y. So these are the equations I got and I'm going to create an equation. Well how do I create that equation? Well I've got B equals AX and D equals CY well, I want to put these two guys together. Therefore, B times D, B times D would be equal to A times X times C times Y. 
by substitution, and then you can move the variables around and get A times C times X times Y, and then you can talk about what the variable or what the integer needs to be, X, Y, that are by definition divides, and so you can prove it. But this is a scrap sheet of paper. These are my thoughts on connecting dots. In the future, when we get into a lot more heavier duty proofs, this WTS method is going to be very important to you because you've got a lot of things going on and you've got to figure out the right paths to take it to link everybody together to end up proving what you need to prove. So, and the next one here, again, it's a uh, problem number nine on page 14 in your book. Let A, B, and C be integers if A divides C and B divides C must A times B divide C. Well, this is one of those classic problems where I give you that is it true, which means you have to prove it, or can you come up with a counterexample? Can you let A equal some number to divide C, B equal some number to divide C, but their product doesn't divide C? So you can typically with a problem like this, you start out with your post a note and you try to put together the givens but you, know, you think about it and if you start putting together A divides C you can by definition divides there exists an integer I get X such that C equals AX and similarly um, if B divides C C equals AY can I put together an equation where I have C is equal to B A times B times quote some integer well, I got two equations that are going to have C equals C equals AX and maybe C equals BY. And how do I get C equals when I can factor out a A times B? So hmm, maybe a counterexample. Then, if that's the case, think about numbers. Now, when you write up a counterexample, you've got to declare, you know, the givens. Given the A divides C and B divides C, so let A equal five and C equal I don't know twenty five and B equal uh, let's see, five, and no, we want bigger numbers than that. So, but whatever you do, you let uh, declare what A is and, and C is and B is, and then you show me truly that A divides that C number and B divides that C number. When I multiply A times B, that won't divide that C number. So maybe you want to think about a counterexample, but if you can think you can put this together, maybe you want to prove it. So now, honestly, on a test, I would never give you a problem like this prove or come up with a counterexample. I stole this one out of a textbook. Because on a test you don't have that much time, I'm going to be more direct. I'm going to tell you, hey, this is a theorem, prove it. Or I'm going to tell you, hey, this is not true, give me a counterexample. Because it's not about you know, discovering what it is, but it's about how you're writing it up. And again, to write up, a, for example, a counterexample, you've got to tell me A is this number, C is this number, B is this number, and then you've got to show me that the if, the if part is satisfied, the given is satisfied, but the conclusion is going to be false. That's how you say it's counterexample, so therefore it's false. And then the last one here on this one, see if I can help you out a little bit more with this one. It says, let A, B, and C be integers. If the GCD of A, B equals 1, and both A and B divide C to prove that A times B divides C. So again, I'm going to pull out my little poster note and I'm going to write down the givens and what I want to show. First off, I'm going to start with the WTS. What do I want to show? I want to show that A, B divides C. What does that mean? That means that I really want to show, by definition of divides, C is equal to A times B times, quote, some integer. I've got to figure out who that integer is going to be. Now, so my goal is to get this kind of an equation. Well, what, do I, what are the givens? Well, the first given is that the GCD of AB equals 1. Well, that means, from our definitions, that A and B are relatively prime. 
However, when it, you know, the goal, remember, with all this stuff is you come up with some kind of an equation so you can manipulate, substitute, and do something or other with equations. There's only one way to go from GCD to an equation. And it's so by theorem 1.2. Now, if you also quoted theorem 1.2b, because this one is relatively prime, absolutely I'm going to give you credit for it. But since it's equal to 1, you can just use the regular 1.2. So by theorem 1.2, remember, there exists integers, and there will be two of them. Pick my favorite guys, u and v, such that a u plus b v equals the gcd, which is 1. And you can write an equation out of it. That is theorem 1.2, and notice. I declared the variable, there exists u and v, such that before I used them in my equation. Well, the trick, that's what I'm going to help you out with this one. On this one is, remember, i got to take the equation, and I also have some other parts on the givens here. Let me write that down first. Here's the other, the other part of the given. I'm given that both, and I can use one big definition on this, both a and b divide C. Well this means by definition of divides, if we're talking about two of them, there exists two integers. There exists integers. I've already used U and V, so I'll use some different letters. X and Y, such that now, if a divides c, c is bigger, c equals ax, and if b divides c, c is bigger, c equals by. Now, so I've got three equations here. So, what's the big deal? Remember what you want to show. I want to show that a times b divides c, which means I need a c equals equation. Well, I got little bitty c equals equations, but I, there's no way for me to ever factor out an a times b on these little bitty equations. You should start with the big equations. So here's one other post to note. So start with, so you start with back with the, you're continuing on with the proof. So as a u plus b v is equal to one. Now here's the deal. Remember, it's equal to one. You can turn one into any integer that you want to just by multiplying by both sides by that integer. So as a u plus b v equals 1, then c times a u plus b v would equal to c times 1 by multiplying by c both sides. And remember, even on my proofs, you're not allowed to abbreviate anything, but this is just scrap work to me thinking about how to come up with this thing. And that means I have, so you can use the classic linking word, does, C, putting it this way, is equal to, and I'm going to distribute CAU plus CBV. Now remember, I want to factor out an AB. Well, this term, I've already got an A in it, so I need to get the B. But I can go and replace that, uh, that C with BY, so I can put a BY into this equation by substitution. And it's still b times a u plus for this c i've already got the b u i want to replace it with a so that would be a x replacing the c times b v and if you'll notice what you got in common when you factor it out you get both these two guys have an a b in it so you're left with y u plus x v and this is going to be your sum integer but remember how you got to phrase it to show by definition of divides somebody divides something rather so as y, u, x, and v are integers, then y, u, plus x, v is an integer. Property of integers. Sums and products of integers are integers. Therefore, by definition of divides, then you kill it. a times b divides c. And then you're done with your proof. So this technique of want to show, because this is really going to become a chess game with all the different pieces I'm going to give you, but there's going to be only one way you can string them up to be able to prove what you need to prove. So welcome to chapter one here. So I hope this has been helpful on the video. Now the other thing I want to 
talk to you guys about is this. Once you have written this thing up in all of its glory and putting the thing together, and again, reuse your neatest handwriting, but you're going to have to scan this thing in. You know, your proper uh, elaborate proof on this guy that you have written up. I don't want to see the WTS stuff. And you're going to make a complete set. You're going to put your name on the thing, print your name, last name first. So, you know, my case, Taylor, John here. And then I'm going to take this document, scan it in as a single PDF file. Any copier will do this. There's Chopknot and, uh, and a few other apps on your phone. You can actually uh, take pictures of these things and actually convert these into a single PDF file. And then get onto your um, uh, Canvas site and upload it to the link. So let me show you where that link's located at here. So come over here. And that link is located, if I go under Modules, and you go under, like I said, Homework Number 1 there. And um, you, like I said, you're going to have the link. I, I'm not in Student View here, so hold on just a second. Let me put this thing back in Student View. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. Slide this thing over so I can get it to the home screen. Oh. And welcome to the wonderful world of settings. So you guys get to see this thing. So I put it on the home view. So this is what you guys get to see. And when I go to um, the modules, you can also go into assignments. And I go down here to my homework number one. You're going to see that. That's what I was trying to show you guys. Submit assignment. Click on this, and then you'll be able to attach your assignment and save it. And it will. Uh, I'll have it in Canvas. And then we go get to grade these guys. So remember, your homework number one is due before tomorrow by 3 p.m. is what I was shooting for, the official beginning of the time of class. And go ahead and get started. We've already got your homework number two waiting for you and stuff. Again, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, I'll see you on section 2.2 video, which I'll be making before too long. Thanks. Bye.